We're going to be bringing Matt Brown on right now, the uh, mortal Matt Brown live to the show. He's someone who started off 12 and 11 in his career. 12 and 11. Not that great, right? Yeah. Then he won eight of his next 10 fights. He's the number five ranked welterweight in the world currently. Number five. Wow. He's coming off a submission guillotine win at UFC 189. He had, I believe, one, two, three, four, five, five consecutive finishes, TKOs, over that streak when he ate of 10. His only loss is coming to Robbie Lawler and Johnny Hendricks. Matt Brown is one of the greatest turnaround success stories in the sport. So we're going to be linking in Matt Brown here in a second. We've got the number five ranked welterweight in the world, the immortal Matt Brown. Matt, thank you very much for joining the show tonight. Yeah, my pleasure. We're going to jump right into it because I know that uh, it's late over there. We appreciate you taking the time. It's past midnight. Matt, you've gone... Uh, you've won eight of your last ten fights, several of them being finishes by KO and most recently by submission. How have you been able to have this resurgence in your career and literally become not only the top five fighter in the world, but in my opinion, a prize fighter? You're someone that I would pay to pay to see to fight. Yeah, I don't consider so much a resurgence. I mean, I know I had a downtime there, and I know that from the outside fire looks like a resurgence and that's a good way to describe it from someone on the outside for me personally it was just staying consistent and staying on the grind every day doing what i do working hard not giving up and um i guess i just kind of follow all those cliches that you hear you know the same old uh things that you know never give up and and don't stop you know all, all that kind of same stuff and i just kind of stayed on it man and uh things just happen to be working out for me now. I, th I think when you work hard, good things happen. Speaking of working hard and getting back on track, like you said, good things happening, you had won, I believe, seven fights in a row. And then your only two losses were to now champion Robbie Lawler and former champion Johnny Hendricks. You were put onto the prelims at UFC 189. I couldn't believe it. I was shocked because you're a guy, if I'm going to pay to watch a card, I want to pay to see Matt Brown fight. Do you think that it was a good thing to be on the prelims? Did you not carry their way, or uh, what did you? Uh, what were your feelings on that? Yeah, it doesn't really affect me either way. Um, I'm not getting, uh, well, at least for that card, I wouldn't be getting pay-per-view points. So that's still really the only thing that that would make a difference outside of. I mean, obviously, the exposure is is better when you're the main event. But if I'm not going to be the main event of the main card, I might as well be the main event of the prelims, which. I haven't seen any ratings or anything. I haven't looked, but I assume I probably got just as many eyes on me as anybody on the main card did. Yeah, and it was also actually one of the all-time greatest fight cards ever in MMA history. Uh, I was in Vegas watching the fight, Matt, and uh, unbelievable. I have to tell you, up until the Robbie Lawler, um, Rory McDonald fight, I, I had the Tim Means, Matt Brown as being the, the fight of the night, even though it only lasted... Uh, as long as it did, it, it was one hell of a back and forth war. You guys were you guys were throwing leather. Yeah, that I was thinking the same thing. And is I'm a big enough fan that I was happy to watch that fight and happy that it was a great fight because I love seeing you know great battles like that. It was, it was a great chess match, a, a great a war of attrition between the two. It had everything that a great fight uh, needs. But at the same time, I was like, God, would you guys quit fighting so hard and so I can give this fight a night bonus? <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> now, it didn't work out that way. But. Recently, uh, I believe it was Jorge Masvidal um, called you out on, on MMA Junkie or something like that. Uh, um, and uh, I know that uh, there's a couple guys up there um, you know, ready to take on Matt Brown. But uh, who do you want to fight at this point, man? I mean, you've pretty much fought everybody. You're, you're, you're making your way back up for a title run. Are, are are the top three guys the only ones that you're considering right now? Well, um, everybody thinks they want a shot at Matt Brown until they get in there with Matt Brown. And That's then, right. Uh, sometimes their minds change. Then. But, uh, no, really, I already actually have my next fight pretty much booked. Um, I just talked to Dana about an hour ago. So I'm, I can't really say anything yet because it's uh, not really confirmed, but... Um, I'm pretty much, so I guess the whole thing is pretty much irrelevant. Who I want to fight, right? Is, is pretty much, uh, it's pretty much in stone now. It's, there's always some, you know, the possibility of something happening, but looks like it's pretty much set. 
Right on, man. All right, nice. Well, Matt, let me ask you a question. You're a huge uh, metal rock fan or a metal uh, fan in terms of music. Do you have your own custom walkout song? I do, and I finally got to walk out to it um, with my my last fight there. Um, Jamie Jostler wrote it for me, and and Dan had turned it down in the past. Um, They never really let anybody come out to hate breed for whatever reason, so um, I was fortunate that he finally let me do it. And is it true that you were at a concert when the former Pantera guitarist was actually murdered on stage, Dimeback Daryl? Yeah, I was there. Oh, wow. Can you tell us, like, what happened? Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, the short version is he got shot. <laughs> but Holy shit. I don't know. I mean, I, um... You know, I've told the story many times. Um, I think there's a video on YouTube about everything. But really, I mean, I was just there um, in the in the not the first row, but there was like you know one line of people in front of me. You know, at a metal concert, it's not really rows, but there was like one person in front of me, and then the 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 barrier, and then the security, and then the the stage. So I was probably within I don't know ten yards of Dimebag when he got shot and uh first stop was I didn't I actually didn't realize he'd got shot um maybe I was drinking too much whatever I don't know but um I didn't hear the gunshots I thought he got stabbed so we tried brushing the stage a few few different people was actually kind of in that same boat as me trying to go, go towards the stage rather than run away from it and then he started firing shots off into the crowd and that was what we turned around and Started to head towards the door. Um, at some point, I basically turned around and looked at, you know, uh, stopped running and turned around and looked back. And I just remember thinking to myself, that I'm, I'm not going to get shot in the back running from this motherfucker. And uh, um, sometime, uh, the, it was a long time ago, so all the actual timing um uh, you know, it's maybe a little bit of a blur, but at some point, um, I watched. So an off-duty cop came in, um, had his uh, had a shotgun, came into the back door. I watched him come in and watched him shoot the guy right in the head, uh, the the, uh, the the perpetrator. Um, yeah, and that's that's a really quick version of the story. Like I said, I've actually probably told it a hundred times since. Uh, I don't know. Whenever, whenever the MMA media found out that that, that happened, uh, probably I probably like I said I probably told the story a hundred times. Everybody asked me about it. So well, that's a pretty pretty crazy incident. We have a couple more questions yeah. before we let you go. First, um, Cutman from the UFC, Stitch Duran, got let go today. Do you think that that will result in any of your fights being? maybe stopped before they would have been, or your opponents now, unfortunately, having the fight stopped earlier because you cut them up with the elbows? Oh, gosh, I don't know. I'd never really thought about that. I mean, they have other, um, um, lots of other qualified gutmen. Um, I, I don't, you know, he's not the only guy, but uh, yeah. outside of that, I mean, I, don't, I haven't really heard the whole story. I don't really know all the details. Um, I know I posted a thing about Reebok today on Twitter, you know, thanking them for sending me some gear, and a lot of people was giving me hate, <laughs> saying that what a coincidence. It's the same day, I was like, I, I didn't even know that that happened until <laughs> after I made that that tweet. Like, I don't sit here on the internet all day and and read the whatever you know news is going on. Well, for a guy a guy like you with all those fights under Zufa, the Reebok deal probably isn't that bad of a deal then. You don't have to go look for a sponsor, and you get a decent paycheck every fight. Yeah, that's absolutely right. And, uh, I, I mean, I see both sides of the equation. Uh, I can tell you, if I were in charge, I would probably do it differently than the way that it is. But I'm not in charge, so you have to leave that up to the powers that be. And... Yeah, I don't have any reason to be angry about the way things are. Um, I don't know about other people's situations. Um, unfortunately, I'm not. Uh, maybe I'm too selfish of a person. And um, but at this point, I mean, the UFC's been good to me my whole life, and um, I'm gonna be good to them back. 
All right, one more question from me, and then we'll get to the last question from my co-host before we uh, let you thank everyone who's supporting you and uh, let you get going. I know it's late over there. Um, let's see here. My qu- oh, yes, Matt. So everyone yeah. knows about you got your nickname, The Immortal, because of a situation that happened um, in your past, you know, dealing with drugs and substance abuse. You've managed to now become, in my opinion, whether you think so or not, a role model. I think you're somebody who is a great example of overcoming you know, possibly partying too hard, being immature, or having an addiction or an issue, whether you did or not, or whatever. The point is, I think that you're an incredible role model, and what you've done is amazing. Can you maybe just give some advice or share just briefly um, some inspiration into your story, just that maybe someone listening who knows someone or is suffering themselves could maybe take from you? Yeah, I, man, I wish it was that easy. I could just give out one piece of advice, and that would change somebody's life. Um, it might. I can tell. Was it? I said it might. Hopefully it might. Yeah, hopefully. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I can only look back at, at my situation, and uh, I, I know what helped me change myself, and that was that. And, and the one line that is actually the, the line that I wrote, or well, didn't write, but I gave to uh, uh, Joseph for the song that he wrote for me. And what I, what I put was a quote that, that stuck with me, um, from the beginning, and it says, stop trying to find yourself and start defining yourself. And I felt like, for me personally, that really, um, that's, that hit home when I was uh, doing a lot of drugs and stuff. I think I was um, maybe doing a little bit of self-exploration and searching and didn't really know where I belonged in the world and was, was kind of lost and, in that sense. And then when I decided that I just, I knew who I wanted to be and decided to go be that person, that was when my life changed. So I think that it, it, if that can ring true for someone else, I, I hope that uh, they can understand the same type of thing. And You know, you can be whoever you want to be and you don't have to, um, you know, drugs aren't the answer as to who you want to be. You, you can uh, define yourself. By doing, by getting off your ass and um, going out and doing positive things. It... Right on, Matt. I have a question for you. Um, it's more of a, not more of a question. It's more of a statement. But there's a guy I would really like to see you fight out there right now. Um, and maybe if this is the person, uh, you can confirm it with silence by not saying anything. I would really like to see you fight Carlos Condit. Ooh. <laughs> that, yeah, that's what everybody wants to see, right? To Ooh. me, that would be. To me, I, I mean, I, I'm putting five hundred dollars that the fight ends by elbow, I'm, <laughs> I, and I'm pretty sure I'm going to win some money either way. Yeah, well, I can tell you this: the, the guy that I, I'm most likely going to be fighting is completely unexpected. Ooh. I didn't, I didn't expect this at all. It's, it's not Condit. I can tell you that. George St. Pierre, that, GSP. <laughs> Does it rhyme with Schmorch mates me air? <laughs> oh man, it rhymes with something crazy. I can tell you that. But, yeah. <laughs> I like. I think that's possibly confirmation. Uh, okay, Matt. Uh, last thing, uh, I want to hear who you're working with, and I want you to be able to thank anyone who's been helping you uh, inside and outside the octagon. So, uh, tell me kind of about who's been supporting you. Uh, man, there's so many people that I could thank. I, I don't really like going on that tangent only because look I I owe equal thanks to so many people that anybody I leave out is just wrong to leave them out so no problem they they all all know who they are and I show thanks in person um and and I believe that's more heartfelt when I show it in person too I agree I'm the same way it's just I always want to give the guys a platform just for their time but I respect that and that's why I like you just because of your mannerisms and things like that uh, Matt Brown, thank you so much for your time. I know you're on the East Coast. We have just finished live with the immortal Matt Brown, the number five ranked welterweight in the world. He'll be making an announcement, I'm sure, anytime soon, so stay tuned for his next fight. Ladies and gentlemen, he has won eight of his last ten, including UFC 189. Matt Brown, thank you for your time. Yeah, thanks for having me, guys. Thanks. Hi, Dude, that guy's a bad ass. 
That was pretty cool. Yeah, I've always wanted to talk to Matt Brown. He, I'm a big fan of his inside and outside the octagon because of his story and just everything he's done. Um, man, who the hell is he fighting? Who is he fighting? 